Artemisia Gentileschi is going to be a very interesting artist. Now, she's one of the few female artists that we tend to look at in the Baroque. She will be trained by her father, who's passed on Caravaggio's influence to his daughter. Her father is one of the people working in Caravaggio's shop. And she will be trained outside the guild system because women were not allowed to participate in that system. So she wasn't permitted to apprentice or become a journeyman. Instead, she's working with her father. And she will ultimately work in Florence, Naples, Venice, and Rome. And arguably her most famous work is going to be Judith Slaying Holofernes. Now, this is an interesting piece. I'm going to use it as an opportunity to tear apart a couple of different ideas. So here, the artist has chosen a theme of female heroism, one common throughout her work. And the theme of Judith slaying Holofernes is one that's very common for the period. We see male and female artists working on this theme. Now, Holofernes was an Assyrian general in charge of the Israelites who succumbed to Judith's charms. He invited her to dinner in his tent, but when he falls asleep, she beheads him. In this version, blood spurts everywhere as Judith and her maidservant use a heavy sword to decapitate the general. And let's look at that for a second. If we look at the detail here, it's remarkable. What's happened is Gentileschi has captured the arterial spurt and everything else that we would see from a decapitation. Well, how does she know this? Well, either she's decapitating other people or she's going to public executions where you would see this fairly commonly. And so she's studying for the piece, creating a very realistic image that would draw us in. The general public at the time would have been very familiar with what a decapitation might look like. Here, the tension and strain are palpable. <coughs> and it's a very interesting image. Now, there is an issue in Gentileschi's life. She is raped by a man by the name of Tasso at a fairly early age. And it's felt that this image is her attempting to take back agency, her depicting female empowerment, something that she thought was lacking given the assault that had taken place. So that is a possibility, and it's something that we need to take into account when looking at this image. The controlled lighting and foreground action recall Caravaggio's work, as well as that strain and that element of human drama. This is simplified. There aren't beautiful satin wall hangings. There's no detail of the tent behind. Instead, all we're seeing is the drama. But I want to compare it to something. In this case, Gentileschi and Caravaggio will depict the same work. And this gives me the opportunity to look at this idea of the female gaze. Now, most art is considered to be depict to use the male gaze. But the female gaze refers to the perspective that a female artist brings to a work that would be different from a male view of the subject. In the case of these two nudes, you can tell that the one in the upper right is going to be by a female artist, the one in the lower left by a male artist. The interests are different. The way of depicting the figure is different. The male artist depicts the female as making herself available, whereas the female artist depicts the female as vulnerable, but also capable of protecting herself, or at least protecting her image. Now, this comes into play when we look at this piece. Now, most art at the time is created by male artists, and it's for a male audience. So when we look at Gentileschi versus Caravaggio, we can start to tear them apart and see those ideas coming out in the painting. So what we have is, for example, Judith. Judith in Caravaggio's piece is dainty, arguably frail, quite beautiful, but it's beauty over strength. And the way that she's depicting Holofernes 
Well, it's sort of like she doesn't want to be near that blade. It's at arm's length, way out there. You couldn't actually behead someone this way, unless that's an incredibly sharp sword or some kind of electric sword. I don't know. Whereas with Judith in Gentileschi's work, she's there. She's a very strong woman, muscular, capable, and she's cutting away. You can imagine sawing through the bone and sinew in the neck. When we look at the maidservant, the maidservant in Caravaggio's work, well, uh, let, let's just say a little bit creepy. You can imagine her coming up, you, you want me to tie up this one too? This is fun. And Judith going, okay, hold on, hold on, back, back off for a minute. We need to kill him first. Uh, where here, the maidservant is getting involved. She's holding Holofernes down. And let's look at Holofernes. Here, he's muscular and capable. He's built in that classical form. Well, at least in Caravaggio's version of it. But here, we have a Holofernes with dad bod. This is a man who seems to lack the strength to overpower Judith. In Caravaggio's case, Holofernes has to be drunk and asleep for this to happen. In Gentileschi's case, it's as if Judith could have taken him in one-on-one -on -one combat. She's more than capable of defeating this man. And it's a very different tale. In Gentileschi's, it's female empowerment. In Caravaggio's, it's an illustration of a narrative. It's human drama, but without the power that we see in Gentileschi's work. It's really remarkable. And let's look at the blood spurt for Caravaggio. This looks like bits of yarn or jello or gummy worms. Okay, I've just compared gummy worms to arterial spurt. Think about that the next time you eat a gummy worm. In Gentileschi's case, it's this blood spurting everywhere. You can imagine that Judith is going to walk out of this tent covered in the blood of Halifernes, but heroically walk out of this tent. Whereas this Judith doesn't seem like she'll be covered in any blood. It's as if the killing is unimportant to the narrative. It's necessary. He has to die, but it's not the key element. So we see these important differences, and it's all because Gentileschi is bringing a whole different perspective. She's bringing a female gaze to the narrative. 